Alright all you square body YouTube fans out there, I've got a new project. You've probably been following along as I've rebuilt this 1984 diesel Suburban into a daily driver. Now I've got a new one I want to show you. Hint. That's right guys, I bought a 1973 full convertible Jimmy. So 73, 73 Jimmy. Well for all you guys that are thinking that I was probably born in 1973, thanks, I appreciate that. I paid a thousand bucks over my budget for this Jimmy, but it came with a lot of new parts. Let me show you around. Alright, well you can see here that the entire vehicle has been painted in an epoxy primer. Uh, I heard that this guy spent some time in body shop hell with this vehicle. Check out those brand new front bumpers. Front, new front uh, bumper supports. Hood is new. Hood hinges are new. New inner fenders. New core support. New battery, and that's the good one, the 1000 amp from uh, Walmart. Okay, the good one. Uh, new fenders. It had new wheel trim, but one's already been damaged. I'm um, thinking we have a couple of new wheels on this vehicle. On the back side, again, new bumper, new license plate support, new bumper support. Alright, let's show some bad. Alright. Okay, well, the interior is not so hot, but I guess it's passable. Looks like we had the uh, light saddle dash and maybe some light saddle door panels. I'm not sure. Those maybe have been white originally. These seats, for all you Jimmy fans, are probably recognizable as being out of a late 70s Jimmy. Same thing with the back jump seat. Uh, missing a little bit of carpet in the back, no big deal. Got some window problems in the back. We'll have to figure that one out. Um, but, look at that. It's an original AC Jimmy. No factory tack, but I think I might be able to fix that. And we got good BFGs all the way around. And there's the engine. Pretty gold valve covers and a shiny Edelbrock air cleaner. But the rest of it is pretty much ugh, ugly. The engine block is either a 1970 model or a 1980 model. Uh, it is a 010 block, so I think that's a 1970, if I'm correct. Uh, let's see here, what else? Um, new master, brake master cylinder. That's kind of nice. Oh, and looking in the radiator grill here, there's a new air conditioning condenser in the front. Um, I think these markers are new. These markers are new. Little stuff, new hood bumpers. 
Another new marker. And I think the rear tail lights, man, that's awfully clear. I think the trim is the original trim, but I think the lens is new. Yeah, those have got to be new lenses. They're too nice. Got a little bit of primer overspray on them, though. It didn't mask that real well. But yeah, so this is going to be my project, guys. Alright, well, one of the issues we need to address first before we drive this thing any distance is this fuel pump that the previous owner put on there. This thing is leaking more than Hillary Clinton's email server. So we're going to have to pull this thing off and see what's going on. I'm suspecting it's the wrong fuel pump, but we'll see. As you can see, um, someone put on a piece of hose and a bolt uh, to try to close off this third um, outlet, which I believe is probably a bypass. I don't know if this truck is supposed to use a bypass or not. Um, I need to go to the back and see if there's any kind of line going up here. But let's go ahead and pull this pump off and we'll see what's going on here. <laughs> Not even tight. Goodness. Sometimes this stuff scares me. <laughs> All right, now, as this is an old school Chevy, when I pull this fuel pump out, there's going to be a push rod in there that may fall out. Don't let that freak you out. All right, okay, so we're underneath the Chevy trying to figure out if we have a uh, return line for our fuel tank. These are our two transmission lines. We've got a fuel line up here, and well, something goes somewhere. Oh. Well, back here on the frame, you can see three lines. Two big ones and a small one going back. This thing leaks pretty good. Who knows what's wrong with it? Cracked block? I don't know. Alright, so what I wound up doing is I found this um, extra hose over here running across the radiator to probably some kind of a um, vapor canister or something so I just took the hose and I bent it into a 180 and I connected that third port from the fuel pump to that hose and this thing will go straight back to the fuel tank and act as a return if this pump ever starts to develop too much pressure so fuel pump done no more leaks So yeah, this is the other thing we need to do when we pull the fuel pump off. We need to take out this uh, fuel tank. This thing is as rusty as Joe Biden's brain. And it's obviously leaking too, probably like his bowels. So this thing's got to come out and uh, we'll put a new one in. Um, I can't seem to get this fuel tank out without removing the rear bumper. Uh, because they have these T-bolts that go up into the... Uh, frame and the axis is like in that little crack there and um, yeah I just can't seem to get a wrench with any kind of leverage on there so the bumper's coming off real quick not a big deal there's a wire All right, well now I get access to these bolts here, so we're gonna do the lock nut first. Let's try it now, into that little wire, that's for the license plate light. There we go. You're like grabbing nipples like that. Mmm. 
This is a nipple twister. Yeah. Nipple twister, yes. That's kind of funny. <laughs> These are tough. I guess I should have twisted more nipples when I was a kid. I guess you were not too popular. Oh, usually it's the guys twisting the nipples on other guys. Yeah, that's not the same. Not the same. I've got no idea how much fuel is in the tank because the fuel gauge isn't working. So I'll have to get another cinder as well. So it might be exciting. Alright, definitely loose. Come down. And I was hoping to find a build sheet back here, but no such luck. They are nasty. Yeah, I got one more back here. Make sure you don't cut these hoses with an electric. That one. All right. That okay, nice. now. I think Phil's kind of heavy. Might be 10 gallons or more in there. It's the middle thing. This middle oh, it's attached to the uh, filler neck. Oh, how do you see that? Um, so, I'm going to have to... There we go. It's loose now. But the neck is uh, stuck on the top or not? Okay. Yeah, it's a rubber. I think it's... Is that poop or what is that? Is that caca? Uh, yeah, that's rat poop on top. Oh no! Better out than in, I always say. Ew. Rat caca. Here, zoom in on the light here. All right, so I've got the new fuel tank with a new cinder installed and I am hooking up all the fuel lines before we raise this thing up. Got a 3 8 for the feed, 5 16 for the return and a quarter inch for the vent to the filler cap. The factory um, vent for the gas cap like an overflow vent or something. Um, it's too big for my sending unit. Okay, my sending unit has a quarter inch vent. So I'm gonna take this little piece of brake line and I'm just going to weld this to the end of it just so I can connect it to the quarter inch line and that should work just fine. I gotta get this up over the frame first. That middle line is not gonna bend. You want me to help you instead? No. I'm going to do this by myself for the benefit of everybody out there in the audience. Is the gate wire the yellow one? No. It's, uh, um, I don't know, covered in mud. Brown, I guess. Brown wire. <laughs> Caca brown? Yeah. Okay, now to insulate that gas tank from rattling around on the uh, body. I'm going to throw this old inner tube on top of it to give it some insulation. Uh, let me make sure I can find my ground wire. Is the ground wire so the fuel tank doesn't explode or what? No, it's for the uh, gauge to work wow. properly. I thought it had something more interesting than the gauge to work you know, properly. You don't have a good ground, and you don't have much gas you've got in the tank. 
Well, suburban might not have a good ground. No. The gauge doesn't work. The fuel gauge? You said it doesn't work that well, isn't it? Or no. which one is the one? Oh, no. Or is the other one for the battery? The battery kind of oh, is okay. off and on. You have to tap on it sometimes. So. Okay. All right, so with the bumper off, you can see how the straps bolt into the frame here. This doesn't go in yet. You just want to slide your bolt through here. Lock washer. Nut. Tighten it down. All right. It's not going anywhere. There. Now once that's in place, now you can flip these over. And put a second nut on top of that. And that way it kind of locks the gas tank in place too. Now we have to reattach the filler neck. Um, put my clamp like this, I guess. There we go. <laughs> That's big. Okay, um, that's bigger than I can than I can deal with here. So, the uh, vent hose is something a little bit bigger than three eighths. So I'll have to find out what that is. I'm just gonna leave these clamps on here so I don't lose them. We got the fuel tank repaired. We got the gas uh, pump, fuel pump up front fixed. We routed the bypass on the fuel pump back to the tank where it belongs. So the fuel systems are worked out on this vehicle. Um, I think I scored pretty good here. Only time will tell. But uh, yeah, leave some comments in the section what you think we should do with this truck. Uh, to make it road worthy, um, I'd like to put some AC in here first. Don't know if I should go with like a, maybe a, a Vortec head swap, maybe get some uh, serpentine belt systems off of a late model block, or just drive it as is and LS swap it later. If you haven't subscribed, definitely you want to hit that subscribe button because these builds will be coming slowly over the next year or so. And uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later.